What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story's called, Operation Karen. After an amusing stint of Reddit reading videos, I discovered this sub and thought you'd appreciate this. My first job after university was as a software consultant under a company that handled large, bespoke software solutions for big finance companies banks, and government. After about a year with a number of projects under my belt, I was sent on my way to a new client, an offshore admin department of a major UK bank to work on some bespoke project for the banking system. This was approaching 10 years ago. This might be a gray area for the sub, but think of my role like the IT equivalent of asking a plumber to fix your crapper. The building had maybe 30 to 40 employees and rows of desks down a long room with multiple little offices or meeting rooms adjacent. I turn up all suited and smart, meeting the manager and discussing the project. To everyone there, I'm just some early 20s youngster being escorted to an interview or something. I turn up the next day, looking all greenhorn and being introduced to the IT department. The first days were pretty normal, people helping me with logins, desks, the basics of a new office job to any onlooker. I'd keep speaking to the same few IT department guys and joining them on their smoke breaks. That's when a mild case of the Karen started to seep in. I was introduced to her at some points, but I had no idea who she was or what she did, and I think that irked her. Rather than ask her colleagues and find out what I was doing, she assumed I'm just the new kid and I wasn't towing company line. This started with a joking, I think the new guy should do the tea runs. British office after all, I obliged. I would offer tea at least once a day to her row of desks as well. The petty power play kept increasing with things like the Friday bacon run and, Oh, if you're going to the printer, can you scan this for me? She was trying to show herself as a senior and that she was my superior. I think the best one was her inviting me to a company meeting she led on current business issues. I'd been invited into many meetings before because part of my job is understanding the client's business. Then she started noticing things. I'd stroll in at 10.30 a.m. I'd leave at 4 p.m. I might have two-hour lunch breaks. I was too casual with my sharp jeans and untucked black shirt even though the IT department guys wore ratty jeans, trainers, and t-shirts. I'd also walk outside to take personal phone calls frequently. I was a consultant who attended our own company meetings and supporting all my other projects for other clients. I'm not on their payroll, I charge them for my time. You see, Karen was a senior in the operations team, the group who was in charge of making sure all the menial business tasks are managed and clicking buttons on bespoke software that my colleagues made to basically keep this crap show afloat. Some of the guys in that team actually do keep their place together, but I don't think she did. And that's when I got accosted in the kitchen. I don't think you're taking this job very seriously. I've been keeping track of your tardiness and I'm sure others have noticed too. I've just submitted a full briefing to your manager to let him know. In this case, the IT department actually spends 50% of their time away from their desks so she thinks I'm playing them when they aren't around. In reality, I'm there when they're there. I'm not an employee, Karen. I work for company. Amusingly, she never once engaged as a human being beforehand. This shocked her. In a huff, she walks out. I think she's angry that she's in the dark, and I'm sure she's just sent a serious case of the Karen mail. Problem is, I'm under a non-disclosure agreement because I'm working on a system that has a rather large access to the information of all the banking hardware and software and our policy is to not talk about it with anyone not directly involved. One of her team was my go-to guy for access and details. To her, my account was a basic no-access account. I'd log in, then remote onto a virtualized workstation that was just out of her jurisdiction, managed by the IT guys. Here's the kicker. I think there was office politics about the email she sent out, but I didn't have a company email address to join in on the fun. My IT colleagues had actually noted all the time she approached me to do menial tasks and new boy errands, to which I charged £250 per hour under admin or contingency budgets. She racked up enough costs to easily cover hiring a junior employee. 
The reason why she wasn't informed, as I found out later that year for a new project, was that I was building a centralized intranet service that managed all the banking server information, hardware details, licenses, permission systems, and so forth in a way to hand control back to the qualified IT guys and severely lighten up the redundant parts of the operations team who are, frankly, unqualified to manage banking infrastructure. She was in her early 50s, pushing close to a six-figure salary to run through a daily checklist she wrote in Excel of jobs to delegate out to others. Essentially got paid a lot to do nothing, for years on end. Being a consultant is a funny job, a tough one at times. Some people treat you like their knight in shining armor as you fix all their crap or improve their daily lives. Others see you as scammers, and others see you as the horseman of their incompetency. Karen, however, couldn't see two feet in front of her superiority complex until a naive 23-year-old automated her job. She wasn't there a few months later when I came back to build upon the previous work. Wow, Karen just got… obliterated. This story's called, Officer in an Airport. This didn't happen to me personally, but to a very close friend of mine on his way home to visit. My childhood best friend was coming home to visit from the military. He's stationed in San Diego. He had sent me a text message to inform me that they had gotten back from their five-month deployment, had gotten approved for leave time, and had just bought a plane ticket home and he would be coming home the next day. I just so happened to be home on leave myself, so he asked me to pick him up from the airport. My friend hadn't told his parents about the trip home, as he wanted to surprise them. My friend took his first flight, if I remember correctly, to Chicago, where he had about a four-hour layover. Now, he wanted to surprise his family in uniform, so he decided to bring his recently pressed and cleaned dress whites in his travel garment bag. When he landed in Chicago, he knew he had time to kill. So, he decided to get some lunch and find his gate, so he would be ready for his next flight. He got himself comfortable at a seat by the gate and struck up conversation with the Marine who had just graduated boot camp from Paris Island and was on his way home to visit his family. Now, my friend has been in the Navy for about five and a half years and is a lieutenant, or O3. He asked what flight the Marine would be going on and found out that they were both catching a flight to Minnesota. After a short amount of time talking, my friend asked the young Marine if he would watch his belongings so he could get changed into his uniform. The Marine agreed and my friend got changed and quickly came back to his seat. As the flight approached, the flight attendants prepared to open the gate for passengers and my friend had gotten up and ready to board. Military, more often than not, gets to board before the other passengers so he stood close to the front of the line. He noticed a well-dressed man and who seemed to be his wife arguing with the flight attendants at the counter about the first-class seats that were available. There were three available and the couple wanted to catch an earlier flight. The attendants said that they had to wait until all the passengers scheduled on the flight were boarded, then they could give them the seats. The man became very angry and began to raise his voice to the attendants. After some back-and-forth arguing, the wife noticed my friend and immediately storms up to him. She says, Are you really going to let your flight attendants treat us like this? Do people know who we are? My friend was confused about why she was asking him. Considering he was wearing an all-white uniform and the pilots had a white top with black pants. My friend said, Ma'am, I can't help you. I'm not who you think I am. Uh, of course I know who you are. Do you think I'm stupid? It's your plane. You decide who boards. Ma'am, I'm not a pilot, and even if I was, I don't think that's how that works. Don't lie to me. I know you're a pilot. You're wearing the damn uniform. The things on your shoulders prove it. You can't trick me. These are shoulder boards, and it means I'm an officer. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm a pilot. At this point, the man at the counter finally gave up trying to argue with the flight attendants and noticed that his wife was arguing with my friend. He realizes that his wife has mistaken my friend for someone he's not and interjects into the conversation, attempting to calm his wife down. This is simply making her more irate as she now starts shouting obscenities at my friend. I don't know why you're getting angry at me. You initiated the conversation and made yourself look dumb. How dare you talk to me like that? I have been flying with this airline for 20 years. Bet your ass I'm going to tell your boss how you talk to me. We need to go now. No! 
Frick you. I'm not letting this freaking punk talk down to me. What's your boss's name? I want to know right now. My friend doesn't hesitate to pull out a skipper's contact card and says, Here's the number to his office. Tell him Lieutenant OP's friend says hello. By this point, she had her phone out and was dialing the number when security showed up. Security told my friend to go ahead and board so he would not miss his flight. As he walks up to the counter, the flight attendant says to him that they decided to upgrade his flight to first class, free of charge. My friend asked if they could do the same for the young Marine that was boarding with him. The attendant agreed and announced on the intercom to thank them for their service and congratulate them on the upgrade to first class. My friend told me the look on the woman's face was priceless as she walked through the gate. Instant karma for a horrible woman. Okay, honestly, if there's military service members on a flight and there are available first class seats, automatic upgrade, come on. And if you're worried that my system is flawed, because there might be more service members than there are seats, and oh my god, there's not enough seats, what are we going to do? It's not fair, how are we going to decide who gets what seat? It's simple, okay? It's first come, first serve. If you're first in line, you get the pick of the... of the pick. <laughs> this story's called $15,000 Instant Karma. Hi! Someone said this belonged here because I technically do not work for the department store that my shop rents out space in. The other day, these two older European women came into my section of the department store I work in and brought up a coat from a different part of the store, asking me to price check it for discounts. I kindly explained that I can't be sure of the price if there's discounts on it, since my section of the store isn't actually working for the store. We just rent out space in it, so I can't be sure of any deals they have if they aren't in the system. I then told them they can go to the main service desk, less than 20 feet away from my section, and they can give the most accurate price. They immediately got very angry, calling me stupid, screaming at me, and saying I didn't know how to do my job. I spent 10 minutes explaining in every way I knew how that I can't be sure if there aren't any discounts on it because we are a separate store just located inside of the department store. So I slash everyone that works there doesn't have knowledge of all the sales going on for other sections because we don't need to. They continue to refuse to walk the few feet to the service desk again and again. And the one doing most of the talking or yelling through, yes, overhand through the heavy ass coat at my stomach and told me to hold it for her, then walked away. I stuck the coat on a rack next to our station. Because this coat wasn't our merchandise and I didn't give a crap what happened to it after that. They then proceeded to come back 30 minutes later after wandering around the store and the one that threw the coat at me was screaming and crying. Freaking out saying that she lost her 24 karat solid gold diamond ring in our store. I noticed the ring the first time I saw her. It was a huge rock. She started screaming for me to please look for it because it's worth $15,000. It's her prized possession, etc. I glanced around and said, I'm sorry, but I have no idea where it is and haven't seen it. She told me it was my fault she lost it, and then her and her benchy sidekick literally ran around the store for five hours and never found it. It's been almost a week, and I asked the general manager of the department store if they found it. And nope, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> this story's called, Similar Logo Does Not Equal Employee. I'm a nurse surgeon's assistant. Long story short, I'm a nurse that participates in patient care from the preoperative units, assists in the procedure throughout surgery, and continues to be involved in their care until they leave post-anesthesia recovery. Unlike most of us, I don't work with any particular surgeon or specialty. I'm in the surgical float pool. On this day, I was visiting our sister hospital on behalf of a cardiovascular surgeon to help plan a patient's transfer to our hospital and procedure, which was a major cardiovascular surgery. All notes, I was wearing scrubs, my ID badge, and a jacket from my home hospital. The logos for both hospitals are similar. My home hospital was Redacted Medical Center at Major City. The hospital I was visiting was Redacted Hospital University Co-op Medical Center at Smaller City. Completely different facilities, different names, etc. I was walking through this hospital trying to find the unit the patient was in, and I'm stopped by an old lady asking where the emergency department is. I didn't work there, however, I did know where the emergency department was, so I gave the directions I knew. I had my meetings, met the patients, collected the information I needed, etc. 
So I decide to head to the cafeteria, grab some food, and leave. On my way leaving, I'm approached by the same old lady, now in a patient gown, asking where the neonatal intensive care unit is. I don't know, I'm not even sure if the hospital had a neonatal intensive care unit. I direct the person to the information desk on that floor with the intent of getting the hell out of the building and eating my carryouts in the car. She decides to follow me, and about halfway to the parking garage, she starts screaming about how unhelpful I am. I try explaining to her that I don't even work there, but she starts yelling about me being a liar because my ID says I do. I show her that my ID literally says that I work at the redacted hospital at Major City, not the facility we were at. I was about to walk away, but she takes my food from me and throws it. Now I'm mad. I put my serious face on and tell her, essentially, to step off and leave. On the way out, I'm stopped by security to which I gave a statement, got laughed at, which made me even more pissed, and by the time I got back to my hospital, the cardiovascular surgeon I made the run for had heard of the event. Okay, I understand that this subreddit exists solely because people don't ever believe anybody for some reason when they say that they don't work at a certain place, but I'm just baffled as to why they never believe them. In the case of this patient, I can actually kind of understand because, you know, when you're visiting a hospital and you're not necessarily familiar with hospitals, nurse equals nurse. You don't understand the differences. At least this is from a perspective of someone who never really goes to hospitals that often. So if I see scrubs, it's just nurse. And I understand there's nuance to it. You know, there's different types of nurses as mentioned here. And this woman probably just assumed this nurse was just trying to get out of doing her job, which is very common with lazy people. So my point is, it's helpful to assume a perspective of ignorance, you know what I mean? Obviously, I'm not saying to be ignorant, I'm just saying stupid people are stupid, <laughs> they don't know any better. But again, in this Redditor's defense, there's not much else she could have done to explain that she didn't work there. So I guess it comes down to the patient to not be a stupid jerk. This story is called Being Mistaken as a Waiter at My Grandfather's Funeral Reception. Not exactly a store, but still relevant? So this happened about five years ago, when my grandfather passed. After the funeral, there was a buffet and reception at a local restaurant. I had finished my food, and so I was heading up to the window where the kitchen was, as I saw some waiters bussing dirty dishes to the window, so I figured it would be helpful if I just took my plate there. As I'm walking over, a woman steps in front of me and blocks my path. She quickly dumps several plates on my pile and very confidently says, Is it helpful if I just hand you all of our plates? The woman was my uncle's latest girlfriend. I calmly replied, um, I don't work here, but I can run these to the kitchen for you, I guess. I was trying to be polite. She gave me a puzzled look and asked, Then what are you doing at this reception? I paused for a moment, baffled that she asked me why I was at my own grandpa's funeral. I didn't respond and just walked away. She sits back down next to my uncle and points to me and gives me a nasty look as she is talking to my uncle presumably asking him who I was. He came up to me a few minutes later and apologized that she had assumed I worked there and just threw a bunch of dishes at me. I saw her outside as we were leaving the restaurant. She came up to me again and said, That was very rude of you to walk away from someone who is talking to you, young man. I was about 15-ish at the time. It's ruder to give someone else your dirty dishes, especially when that someone just lost their grandfather. But I guess no one's ever taught you any manners. I said as I was climbing into my mom's van. I never saw her again. My uncle dumped her basically right after that. Alright guys, I'm gonna say something potentially snotty and you know what? No, I don't apologize. This is who I am. I'm kidding. I'm sorry if I'm rude. But if you're dating someone and you go to a family sort of event, you know, that you probably have no business being there, then please, I don't know how else to say this, but know your place? <laughs> For instance, if you're going to someone's funeral, um, it might help to know who their relatives are. Okay, actually, first of all, if you don't know the family, then why are you even going to a funeral? Because that's a rather intimate sort of thing. Unless it's a serious relationship, I say just don't even come. 
Like, don't bring someone like your freaking girlfriend of two hours to your grandpa's funeral. That's just weird. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.